Good morning, Emerson Eagles. This is Mr. Massimino. It's so good to see everybody. Um, I just wanted to start uh, your week off with a little read aloud. And I thought that we would start reading a story called Seed Folks. Uh, it's about a bunch of community members um, whose stories all kind of tie together around a uh, young girl's garden that she begins to plant or start in their community. I haven't actually read it, so we're going to be reading it all together. I thought that I would just read like uh, maybe a chapter, a uh, chapter every other day, or um, we'll see how the pacing goes. It's not a long book. It's a realistic fiction book. It's going to look backwards as I hold it up, but this is what the cover looks like. Um, you could just imagine it with the S's and all the letters facing the other way. All right, so I hope you enjoy. We're going to be talking about the characters in this book, building connections as we continue on. I'll try to keep the uh, videos pretty short. This was also written by Paul Fleischman, and you can look him up. He has a lot of other great reads. So our first chapter is about Kim. And this is Kim. And that's what the illustrations in our story are, are starting out looking like. I stood before our family altar. It was dawn, so right before the sun woke up. No one else in the apartment was awake I stared at my father's photograph, his thin face stern, lips latched tight, his eyes peering permanently to the right. I was nine years old and still hoped that perhaps his eyes might move, might notice me. An altar is usually a small stand that some families have uh, in a special place in their house where they hold memories. Um, usually of those that have passed on or for other religious purposes. The candles and incense sticks lit the day before to mark his death anniversary. They had burnt out. The rice and meat offered him were gone, and after the evening feast past midnight, I had been wakened by my mother's crying. My oldest sister had joined in. My own tears had then come as well, but for a different reason. I turned from the altar, tiptoed to the kitchen, and quietly drew a spoon from a drawer. I filled my lunch thermos with water and reached into our jar of dried lima beans. Then I walked outside to the street. The sidewalk was completely empty. It was Sunday, early in April. An icy wind teetered trash cans and turned my cheeks to marble. In Vietnam, we had no weather like that. Here in Cleveland, people call it spring. I walked half a block, then crossed the street and reached the vacant lot. As I read this, I think to myself, wow, it's also the beginning of April where we live. I stood tall and scouted. No one was sleeping on the old couch in the middle. I'd never entered a, the lot before or wanted to. I did so now, picking my way between tires and trash bags. I nearly stepped on two rats, gnawing and froze. Then I told myself that I must show my bravery. I continued farther and chose a spot far from the sidewalk and hidden from view by a rusty refrigerator. I had to keep my project safe. I took out my spoon and began to dig. The snow had melted, but the ground was hard. After much work, I finished one hole, then a second, and then a third. And I thought about how my mother and sisters remembered my father and how they knew his face from every angle and held in their fingers to feel of his hands. I had no such memories to cry over. I'd been born eight months after he died. Worse, he had no memories of me. And when his spirit hovered over our altar, did it even know who I was? I dug six holes. All his life in Vietnam, my father had been a farmer. Here, our apartment house had no yard. But in that vacant lot, 
he would see me. He would watch my beans break ground and spread, and would notice with pleasure their pods growing plump. He would see my patience and my hard work. I would show him that I could raise plants as he did. I would show him that I was his daughter. My class had sprouted lima beans in paper cups the year before. I know. I now <laughs> placed a bean in each of the holes. I covered them up, pressing the soil down firmly with my fingertips. I opened my thermos and watered them all. And I vowed to myself that those beans would thrive. That means they would do really well under her care. So that was our character, Kim. We learned a lot about Kim in a very short time. Remember, every story starts with an introduction where we begin to learn about the character and the setting. And in this chapter, we began to learn about our character, Kim, a young girl whose family's from Vietnam. She lost her dad a year ago and is going to plant some lima beans in a community space in hopes to show that she is much like her father. All right, well, let's see how this goes. And um, I'll try to make this a link and we'll start chapter two soon. Thanks, see y'all later.